Okay, so if you're on the home page, <clears throat> as you can see, you'll see the productions uh, companies. Probably scroll across, you know, CBS, ABC. Those are the productions I have contracts with that over the years, I mean, I, I pretty much deal with them directly. My client is the locations department. That's who, that's who when y'all come with me, those are the people, your direct contact people, uh, are the locations. That's who hires me directly. So what is an install service? I'm sure that all of you have a beautiful home. And if you want your house to be on camera or they can come to your house and film. They pay very well for that, just so you know. Um, what we do is they'll contact us and we'll protect the home. Um, install is the layout protection service. So let me show you what that is. We have different materials. This is a mat. Can y'all see this right here? We would put this down on your wood floors, marble floors, whatever kind of floor you know that you have to protect, you know, if people coming in with stuff like this, you know what I'm saying? They might come in and they might not have the the bottoms where where they, you know, the rubber. They might it might just be a metal situation and they those guys be so wound up trying to get the shot that they just totally forget about the house. So we protect the house. We use these kind of mats I have. Let me see. This is something right here like a, we put on the corner of a doorway. This is the, the reason is, is because when they bring in Video Village or they bring in equipment, they might push this cart and bang the, bang the side of the wall. So every aspect of the house, the furniture, we'll put ferny pads on. Uh, your, your, your island that's in the middle of your thing, we'll put bubble wrap, you know what I'm saying? We just basically make sure that we protect the house. That is what we do, that's what they expect us to do. Because what happens is, when they leave your house and your house is ruined, now they have to pay for it, you know what I'm saying? So we'll, we're, we're like the, it, without us, they're gonna pay a whole lot of money. And let me tell you, and Ron uh, agree with this, I have been in the highest place possible in this city. $40 million mansions all the way to a basement. You know what I'm saying? There, there is no place that they don't send you. They, they put you in alleyways. Wherever they want the shot, that's where you're going to be. Um, so Sovereign has been everywhere. Um, okay, this right here, I'm trying. This is a new invention. Not new, but I love it personally because it's super quick and easy and I can put it down on the floor quickly and pick it up quickly. So if anybody work with me, this is a light situation. And it sticks to the floor as soon as you put it down, but it pops right back up, so it won't move. It's, it's called Eco Runner. Um, I recommend it for anything, you know, when it pertains to protecting anything, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, if you want the information on that, I can tell you where it's at. It's a secret. I keep it a secret, but I'll tell y'all. Okay. Um, MJ, you said something about Video Village. Can you go on to what's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So, okay, so, in, as you know, in film and television, there's different departments. So, when they come to film in the location, you have your grips, which they are the people who control the lighting. So, anytime you see a film, there's a, there's a department of people who's who's controlling the lighting. Then you have your lighting department. You have guys who actually bring the lamps, the big ones that can make it look like the sun outside in the, at midnight. And then you have ones with the little ones, all different lamps. Now with that, the lighting guy, the lamp guy, he'll put the lamp straight forward and then the, the grip will put something in front of it to, to make the, the aesthetic look a certain way. You know what I'm saying? It'll, it, it, that's what film and television is. That, that's how you get the certain looks of different uh, things. Now, you have, this is all in the same location at the same time. So you have your grips, you have your lighting department, you have your electricians, which you have people running big, gigantic, you know, stuff to the generator. Then you have your AD department, which is your camera crew. 
And these guys, you know what I'm saying, those are the guys who handle and stuff like that. Then you have Video Village and you have your sound crew. Now this is a whole bunch of people to maybe get two shots. You know, you, it might take us 11 hours to get two, two shots, but then that shot might be 20 seconds on camera. But it'll take a 12 hour day to get 20 seconds of shooting. That's, I don't understand that, but that's the case. But Video Village is a place where you, working with me, will be. That's your, that's why I have, and I'm gonna get into this uh, etiquette situation as far as the etiquette on set because it's very important certain things that you can and cannot do. The best part about Sovereign is we're not bound like you to just push a button all day and stand there for 12 hours. Or you, we get to roam and move around freely anywhere we want. So we can sit next to Denzel and have a conversation. We can go to Crafty and eat. We can, we can go, we can do whatever we want to do. You know what I'm saying? I've done that, I've hung out with many people. But the point is, because we're the vendor, when we sit, we sit in Video Village where the chairs are, you're looking into the camera. Now, the reason why you're doing that, and that position is called a technician. That's called a layout technician. That is a hire for that also. A hire for an installer, which is a person who will come and lay this out prior to the shoot. So you come in, lay this out, and then go home. Then I have a person that's a technician. That person is on the clock and they sit with production for 12 hours. Now, while you're there, your primary focus is, to see how he's shooting right here? So like, if we had this right here, if we had this, uh, hypothetically, if this was in the way of the shot, you can look through the camera and see it yourself or, or on the monitor, and you can go pick that up because they're gonna tell you to do it anyway because it can't be in a live shot. So as a technician, what you do is you, you know, you, you would be proactive, go get the stuff, take it, you know, put it down. And once they finish shooting, then you come back and put it back. Uh, that's primarily what a technician is, but it's a, it's a, you know, you have to be proactive. You have to be, I put people, okay, so. My problem sometimes with some of the people is that they get caught up in the shot itself. You know, if they're doing an action scene and they fighting and going through a wall, you'd be like, wow, that's incredible. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or shoot them up, bang, bang. I mean, the list is endless, you know what I'm saying, of the stuff that happens. Um, they, don't, they don't let you in the room for sex scenes, so don't think that's gonna happen. Everybody gotta go, you know what I'm saying? Only the director and the artist can be in the room, um, but uh, it's fun, it's a, it's a lot of fun. And most of the time, um, you, you're in a position where you can network, you can meet, okay, I'm gonna tell you what happened after that, but you can meet anybody you want, you know, appropriately, you know what I'm saying? You don't wanna be in nobody's face all day, but you can go to the camera department and have a conversation. Hey buddy, you know, I'm interested in this, or, so-and-so, so-and-so. I will say this humbly. I have been the liaison or the conduit. Everybody who's been a tech for me over the years are now career people in the industry. They have started with me and production has, because of their work ethic, because everybody's always watching, don't ever think nobody watching. Um, even if I ain't there, they, somebody watching. They have contacted me directly, and these people are on big shows now. They, they, they're, they're living their dream, um, making a ton of money, being a, 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 a assistant directors or whatever they wanted to be. One of the girls I had, she's now on a camera crew. She's a utility for a show called Resident. Y'all see Resident? Anybody? Okay, well, it's a nice show. It's a good show. Check it out. It's like uh, Grey's Anatomy. Anybody? Anybody? Okay, so it's like that, but it's big. It's a hit. It's a big show. Anybody? Huh? Is it a new show? It's, this is the second year of it. 
Uh, Stranger Things, anybody? Anybody? Okay, so yeah, we on that right now currently. I actually got to go there tomorrow. But these are the things that you would be doing. And then there, that's a, that show is colossal now. I had no idea them little kids was going to be so, you know, cool. I mean, I hung out with them before, but I had no idea that it was going to take off. Like, I, it was a monster show. When we first filmed that show, I just have to say this, I thought that show was going to lose, like, the shirt because we walking around on set and there's monsters. And I'm like, really? Are we doing monsters right now in 2018? Is this what we doing? And uh, all of us, like, none of the people that was on the actual show production felt like at the time that it was going to take off. Like, we was like, whatever, dude. Let's just get the check and keep it moving. And that's the, you know, this thing was... And now they top secret. They, it's so top secret. If you don't have a badge, you, you can't get, you know, the kids is like stars now. You know what I'm saying? You can't even say hello to them now. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, it's out of whatever. So the point is, uh, these people that work for me are now on these kind of shows living their dream. This is what, this is the opposite of things that I can offer. You know what I'm saying? That, that has happened. And if you put forth the effort, I will never stop a person from moving forward if that's something that you wanted to do. If you have dreams of being in the set and things like that, I'm all in. Just so you understand, film industry, and I'm sure y'all already had some other speakers, it is part-time. There is no full-time work in film and television. Uh, Robert De Niro is a part-time worker. Denzel Washington is part-time. The reason it's part-time is because once the show start and once the show end, that's it. If you don't get another show, then you, then you, it is what it is. But the, the duration of the time of the show, from the beginning to end, that's your work time. And then some people don't work for six months. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to keep it 100 with you because this is the film and television industry. Um, I'm, I'm blessed enough to be in a position that what sovereign is that we maintain a consistent amount of work. Uh, I try to at least keep the highest amount of shows I've had at one time is 13. So I was juggling 13 shows at the same time. Uh, and I'm not even, and people that's in the industry, they, they be perplexed by that. They like, how in the world did you manage that? Well, my phone never stopped ringing. And I have people like yourself who I trust to disperse once they get training to go handle business. And then if I don't get a phone call, this is how the industry works. They don't call you if you did a good job. If you don't get a call, you did a good job. If you get a call, it's a problem. If I get a phone call from a producer or somebody, I am immediately understanding that something is wrong. Because if you do not get a phone call, that's, I don't expect to get a phone call after the work is done. I don't expect it. If I do, it's a problem. You know what I'm saying? So, OK, so everybody got to understand in this industry, it's all union. Now, you could do independent stuff. But if you trying to go to the next level, to what you're talking about, now you can have your own equipment, like this young man. And you can have scripts. and. You can make whatever you want to make and be his camera assistant right now. Whatever he's going to pay you as a budget, that's, that'll be what it is. However, the unions unfortunately run this show, period, end the story. And you, what you're talking about is a camera union, and they, they pay very well. The, the, the buy-in of it is, is high, but the union itself, once you in, you can make a lot of money. Just as an assistant, you could probably make a hundred thousand a year if you if you you know it's consistent. If you get down with a the idea is to network, and if if you get down with a good crew that move a lot and film a lot, different different stuff, independent stuff like you said, commercials or whatever, you can make a, a couple of dollars. It's hard work though, but anybody. Nothing is wrong with being in a union. I just want to make it clear what the union entails. So y'all know. Because each one of y'all will have to be. Or not. You could do it yourself. 
carve your own lane and become who what you want to be. But if you're going to get in a union, understand, they will not help you get a job. That's not what the union does. Okay, so when I joined the union, I paid a thousand dollars. It took me six months from the time I paid the money till I got my first job. And that was not me trying, not trying to be. I woke up at four o'clock in the morning. I would drive literally to just productions that I may have seen randomly in the street that, you know, you see them all the time, right? Out here. Yeah, the sun. So I just drove and stood there and waited to talk to somebody and, hey, I'm in the union, what can I do? Can you help me? People were looking at me sideways for six months. I constantly contacted people to try to get work. People was just like, hey, just keep trying. One day I'm at this event, I'll never forget this. This is a good story. I'm at another event, musically, um, and I get a phone call, hey, I see that you was on the availability list for GRIP, and are you still interested? I'm like, absolutely. I said, what day do, will you need me to start? He said, right now. Now, I'm, I'm at an event. I'm dressed like a, I got a little tuxedo type deal on. I'm, I'm styling, you know, swagged out. I'm thinking to myself, I can't go on set like this, but the man said, look, if you can get here in an hour, the job is yours. I looked up the address to where I was, it was five minutes away. I was like, okay, this, this must be the, the, the ticket. I, I drive over, I get there, my man, everybody laughing at me because y'all know how production look. You got the belts on and the tape and you know what I'm saying, people are sweating and dirty and I'm sitting here with my nice little Gucci's on, I'm, I'm up here chilling. So I took my jacket off, rolled up my sleeves and uh, the man gave me a little tape over the side. I look crazy, I don't know what, crazy. And uh, okay, so I get on set. This is my first time ever. And it was an action scene. They was making it rain and all kind. I was just like, okay, this is, this is different. And I'm standing at the crafty table. Crafty is a place where you can just eat all day, just so you know. So they got, it's like a mobile uh, store. I promise on everything that's good, you will get fat if you if it's gonna happen. All right, anyway, so I'm standing there and somebody tapped me on my shoulder. I'm like this, hey, okay, you know, tap me on my shoulder. It was Anthony Hopkins, Silence of the Lamb. I thought I was going to kill myself. You know what I'm saying? I turned around, like I was, that's the first time I ever been on set in my life. I'm like, what's up? He, he, I was like, oh, Anthony Hopkins, he looked like Silence of the Lamb. I was like, <laughs> I was like, uh, I said, uh, how you doing? He said, what kind of pizza we got? I was like, well, what kind of pizza do you like? He said, pepperoni. I said, okay, well, let me find you a slice of pepperoni. He, I found some, and we sat there, ate pizza together, and had a nice conversation. I found out he the one that brought the pizza for the crew. They do that from time to time. I was, I was, I didn't even know, I, I was just standing there eating a piece of pizza with Anthony Hopkins. And from that point, and I, I haven't looked back since. So it was, a, it was an incredible experience, but it was like I was in a dream. Like I was like, wow, this is, this is, I'm standing next to Anthony Hopkins having pizza. <laughs> now I had lunch with Oprah, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, Oprah, you know what I'm saying? Hey, MJ, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, the point is, um, the union will help in a capacity of once you in, um, you get paid well. And if you get dug into a nice crew of people, you'll work.